Good morning. Please stand and open up your hymnals to number 596 and join in singing Be Not Afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and Father Jerry McCarran. I'm stationed at the seminary. I know you have some priests like Father Susco who work together with me who, who serve here regularly. But um, I'm just filling in today and I'm really happy to be with you. Um, I remember well, I've been on the seminary uh, faculty a long time and um, I remember when Father Jim Ferry entered the seminary and uh, I remember when he was ordained in 2006. And he was always a very, very kind, uh, kind man, and uh, I've had the privilege of keeping in touch with him over the years. Um, so, in any event, um, here we are together, and my brothers and sisters, as we come to worship, we need to acknowledge our sins that we may be prepared to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you show us the Father's love. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us how to live our lives to the full. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit you give us from the Father enables us to do this. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord Jesus, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Now the Holy One, 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Today's readings can be found in your gather book, number 1028. <coughs> A reading from the book, first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but you, for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you request it. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Why I rule my life 
by your precepts and hate false ways. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. Your decrees are wonderful indeed. Soul obeys them. The unfolding of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there'll be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. 
And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. I feel honored to, to be with you, and um, it, uh, I, I've just I've touched by Celebrate Mass in this church. I've, I've been here for various things over the years, uh, and my, my confessor uh, many years ago was stationed here, and I used to go to the rectory very often on Saturdays to confess my sins, but um, I don't think I've ever celebrated Mass in, in your church, and I, I'm moved by the the stained glass, particularly that shows something of the, the early history of, of the Church of the United States, you know. Um, there aren't too many of us here, I understand, you know, it's, it's summer and there, there'd be more, more here normally, but obviously we have a very, very big parish church here and um, sometimes maybe it's a little discouraging that there aren't more here and yet we have to hope and, and we can look at, at um, some of the sacrifices that some of those people depicted uh, in those windows made. And, um, and the Lord invites us to do similar kinds of things appropriate for our own day. And, um, and maybe that's how more people will hear the good news. And it's really the hearing of that good news I'd like to talk about today uh, with our, our first couple of parables about finding the treasure in the field and, uh, and the, the parallel one, similar one, about, about the, uh, finding the, the pearl of great price. You know, when a priest is ordained, um, we usually have a little card made. It's kind of like you know, when you go to a funeral home in someone's wake and you get a little memorial card and you know, it'll have on one side, it'll have the person's name and usually maybe their date of birth and their date of death. And uh, on the other side, maybe it would have a scripture verse or maybe a little more, maybe the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, or maybe it'd have a poem or whatever, whatever it might be. But um, when a priest is ordained, just like when a nun or religious brother makes profession, there's usually a card like that. And um, so I know, you know, Father Ferry would have, would have had one in, in May 2006 when he was ordained. And, uh, when I was thinking about mine in May 1991, um, I, I guess I'd really first gotten super excited about the gospel when I went to Catholic school for the first time in my life in, in uh, ninth grade. And I had a class when I was 14 that very fall, freshman year, on the gospels. And, and, and the teacher, he had us read Mark's gospel from beginning to end over a period of time, and he really got us into it. He chose Mark in part because it was probably the first one written, but also because it was the shortest. And he thought that it's better to get into one in a lot of, you know, up close, in a lot of detail, sometimes it's giving the surface. And, uh, you know, if you've never had the opportunity to, to read a gospel, um, you know, from beginning, and I don't mean in one sitting, but just kind of from beginning to end. We kind of do it in, in, in the church. We, we skip some passages, but, you know, we're reading through Matthew's gospel now, but we do skip some things, and it's spread out over a real long time. But sometimes just to, to take the scripture and to, to read it, you know, a chapter or two a day, whatever, but kind of with focus, it, it does, we do see things that way that we don't see when we read it just a little bit at a time. And uh, there are advantages to both approaches, but I just encourage you to do that. And, um, and I guess my heart was set on fire by Jesus' first words in the Gospel of Mark. You know, Mark doesn't tell the story of his birth. Mark just begins with that, that we have that in Matthew and, and, and Luke and in another way in John. But Mark just jumps in with Jesus' ministry. So he talks about John the Baptist. And then he says, and I quote, after John's arrest, Jesus appeared in Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Reform your lives and believe in the good news. 
And, um, and those words kind of stayed with me and they kind of set my heart on fire. And they're very similar words in Matthew and Luke when Jesus begins his ministry. And uh, so I thought about putting those words on the little card that would come out, you know, that I give people at my ordination and my first mass the next day. And uh, my mom was like, well, yeah, but Jerry, it's, it sounds a little bit like, you know, one of those wild Bible preachers you hear on the radio, you know, talking about the end times and everything. And I didn't fully agree, but I, I kind of knew what she said. And, uh, and whatever, I also wanted to please her. So maybe I, maybe I pleased her too much. I changed, so I, I went to a, a, another choice. But the other choice was the first parable here. And in a way, it says the same thing, but maybe, maybe with a different tone. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And if those first words had impressed me when I was 14, these next words impressed me when I was about 25 in the seminary because I had a teacher, Father Saratelli, for a course on the parables of Jesus. Um, he later became a bishop and the Bishop of Patterson and now he's retired. But, um, but he talked about this particular little parable as kind of summing up all the parables, or we might say it sums up Jesus' message. So the kingdom of God is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds. You know, it's not something that we create. It's not something that we do by reading a self-help book. It's not something we could really even imagine. But it's something given to us. And that's why Jesus could say at the very beginning of his ministry, um, the kingdom of, of God is at hand. Reform your lives and believe the good news. The good news. Uh, the gospel. The gospel is just kind of an old English word. It means good news. And um, the good news. It's news. It's not something we could think of. It's something given to us. It's kind of a surprise. When Jesus came on the scene... What he said was a surprise, and in a way it was in continuity with everything that the Jewish people knew, but he spoke in a different way, and he had more to say, and he spoke about fulfilling it. And so when we discover this treasure, um, it's something really wonderful. And you know, most people, like I drove from South Orange, you know, here, um, to West Orange, but most people are, have their minds on something else on Sunday morning. And I don't mean that we woke up this morning and said, oh, wow, I want to go hear the good news. I think I'll go to church today. I mean, it's part of our pattern and all that. But down deep, we know that there's something very special here in word and sacrament. We know something about the treasure. Now, maybe because we didn't discover it just yesterday, our excitement isn't quite the same like a first falling in love. But that doesn't mean there isn't very real love here, right? There are married couples here who, who um, maybe don't have quite the same excitement that they did when they first saw their partner across the dance floor or wherever it was but uh, many years ago. But that doesn't mean that that love isn't burning in, in a very real and very powerful way. And um, so I think the invitation, especially maybe if summer provides us with a little bit of leisure that we don't always have, is, is maybe to allow that to sink in, you know? What might our lives look like if we didn't really have the gospel? Now, you might say, well, you know, if I didn't go to church today, would my life be radically different? You know, well, maybe not for the one day, but cumulatively, like if you hadn't been to church in years, would that affect your worldview? How much does coming here, just in, in little ways, imperceptible maybe, but lift up our hearts, sharpen our vision, like putting reading glasses on, so now I can see well, um, give us a purpose and a meaning, and help us know, hopefully, that we are loved, loved very much by God. 
uh, because that's the good news. You know, that's the good news. So what happens when we find the treasure? Well, we want it. So that's why the guy buries it again, because he's like, okay, I want it. I want this, but in his time of day, he, does, he can't just take the treasure. You know, that'd be like stealing. But if he buys the field, then whatever's in the field's his. So he said, I want to do that. I want it. And he's filled with joy because now he has this treasure. He just has to buy the field. So he finds the good news and the good news brings him joy because it's good. It's good. It's the secret of life. And, uh, but now he needs to, to make the treasure his own. He knows it's there. It's, he knows it's offered. It's there for the taking. But he needs really to make it his own. And all of a sudden, then he starts thinking, well, you know, I got I to gotta get together a little bit of money here to buy this field. This field isn't cheap. So he starts thinking about things he owns and what he could sell, what he could trade, how he could raise the capital to buy the field. And he does it. Now, this is a compressed little parable, so it doesn't go through the particulars of what he sold or what he had to give up, what he had to leave behind. Maybe he owned some property and sell that to buy the field, right? Um, and maybe it was hard. Maybe he'd grown up on that property and uh, it was a little hard to let go of it. You know, I just, um, so my mother died a year and a half ago and I sold her condominium and, and uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit of a letting go and all of that, right? That's, that's a natural thing. But he remembers the treasure and that motivates him. And um, so we found the treasure. It's brought us joy. We might, might not be overflowing with smiles and joy today, but it has brought us joy because otherwise we'd be sleeping in or watching reruns of a game or whatever now, you know? We know there's something here. And, um, and we have invested, you know, for, for minimally, we've invested our Sunday morning here, right? But you've invested a lot more in the gospel. And yet, there may be ways where we could invest more and make the treasure more fully our own. I know that's the case for me. You know, and there's this resistance deep in our heart sometimes to change, you know. We don't always like the way things are, but we're afraid of the way things might be, and we're, we're afraid to let go. Um, when I was a little kid, uh, I was in second grade, in fact, and it was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And my mom came into my room and she said, you know, Thanksgiving's going to be a little different this year. We're going to go to Disney World. And I had seen advertisements for Disney World on TV. Disney World was new. It only opened like a year before that or something. And uh, I'd seen advertisements for TV, on TV and I was, you know, I kind of wanted to go there. And, but I'd never been on a plane or anything like that. And, and, um, but you know what I did? I cried a little bit. My mom was... was really surprised because she thought she had this great gift to offer me but you know as a little eight-year-old I was already attached to Thanksgiving the way we did it and this meant that Thanksgiving vacation we'd be in Disney World and even though I wanted to go there I was kind of afraid of the change so um, you know as adults uh, we're maybe not you know that naive whatever things are a little more hidden but we, we do have resistance. So we might ask ourselves, you know, what are the things that are maybe keeping me back from fully buying this treasure? Do I need to listen to a church teaching? Do I need to forgive someone? Um, could be a lot of different things. But that's a good question to ask. But the first thing to do is really to appreciate the treasure. Because we'll never give anything up if we don't appreciate the treasure. We, we need to bring that joy back. So what helps you know God's love? And this is where I'll end today, you know. Um, prayer could be simply recalling um, ways in which you know you're loved by God. Some of that may be, you know, you had an experience of prayer and you knew God loved you. But others may be just, you know, at a very difficult time in life when everything seemed to be falling apart. Somehow you had a friend who stood by you, you know, who cared. And looking back, you can say maybe that was how God cared for me through that friend. It could be a lot of different things. But um, I think we do well 
to savor, to appreciate, to bask in the treasure that's been given to us. That's good news. And, um, and that rekindles the joy. And then I, I don't think we need to worry too much about um, what we'll sell for it because the more we appreciate it, the more we're willing to let go of whatever, whatever is in the way. Um, all right. I'm going to use a little bit of a longer Eucharistic prayer today, by the way, the fourth, but it kind of recounts the story of salvation um, in a very beautiful way. And I think it would be good for us to hear that in light of the parable of the treasure buried in the field, which someone in joy goes out and uh, sells everything to buy the field. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Our Savior destroyed death and restored life by rising again. Let us humbly ask him. That we would live in gratitude for God's mercy, especially in times of crisis and uncertainty, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who suffer without sufficient work or money or shelter, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for success in the National Eucharistic Conference of 2024 and renewed faith in Jesus' real presence among us, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who suffer in mental illness or physical illness, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our beloved deceased, Ralph Macario, Elizabeth Ann Gillian, Annette Dolly Cunningham, Suzanne O'Connell, we pray. Oh, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for the eternal rest of John Sharkey, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in the silence of our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing Benediction, which is found on the yellow music sheets.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. trusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that, bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, May the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Sent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your love and kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and the assistant bishops, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the faith, whose, all, all the dead whose faith only you have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to set. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your hospitality, and I wish to thank our, our fine servers here. Um, thank you. The Lord be with you. And be your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Please open your hymnal to number 492 and join in singing to Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King. <laughs> 